Good morning, how you doing? My name is James. I'm sitting here in my training room looking forward to the next class. My class spends a lot of time on finishing. Here's my current philosophy of workflow. Number one, you set your case up and when you do design, you design 95% of your final shape, form, emergence in the software. So when we do machine that out, we machine it out with extra fine mill. Now, this is where the prime mill is really thriving extremely well because it's fast. Those extra burrs, in other words, it's a four burr mill, really provides detail and refinement so we can be more conservative with our margin parameters, meaning there's less finishing and there's absolutely no chipping on the materials regardless of which material you're using. Now, I'm a big Emacs fan, mainly because I've used it a long time and it has the strength. If you're working posteriorly, covering that occlusal table, I want to have that strength. There's a study that shows some other lithium disilicates that are small particles. Now, the small particle lithium disilicates machine very well, but you can see that the fracture toughness is significantly less. It has been said by Bob Kelly that the most predicting metric within the strength of a material is the fracture toughness. It measures what happens over a period of time and how a ceramic will withstand forces. Now, all these ceramics will work well. I've used Impress for years, which is a fracture toughness of about 1.08. But to do that and make it work well, we had to encase it with a lot of enamel. And that's a conservative restoration, which is still my preference. But when I'm covering that occlusal table and those working cuts get that shear force, I want to have a fracture toughness of at least over 2.0 and your zirconias are gonna provide that for you. And the only ceramic out there today is Emacs that will provide that for you. And we know we have a good 10 year plus studies to show how robust Emacs is. Now, to make it work well, and I just had a rep in here the other day who had great intentions of where he was sharing another alternative lithium disilicate saying that it doesn't chip when you mill. Well, I don't really have chipping problems with Emacs because I've used it for a long time and I've calibrated my milling units both through parameters and the burrs that I use to get exquisite margins with no chipping. As you can see on this onlay, there's no chipping at all. This is a onlay that I use for my class and I mill it out with the extra fine mill in the prime mill. Ooh, I like the way that sounded. When we do understand our milling options, both with the M6L and the Prime Mill, we don't see chipping on the margins. And my basic parameter is 50 microns, marginal thickness, and extra fine mill. The M6L, if you have four engines, will also do extra fine mill, but it takes a long time. So that makes a one appointment deal a little more challenging. But if you're doing an onlay, it works okay. It's a four set. Outside of speed, there is advantage to the MCXL extra fine mill, and that is the burr on the left, that step burr, you have two options. You can use the 12 or the 12S. The 12 has a smaller tip on it. It's just a little smaller than one millimeter, so that first pass of mill has a smaller burr set on the left, which means less over mill potential, and then it goes to the extra fine mills for that final mill. And that has been excellent. My one issue with the prime mill, which I love now, it's working very, very well, is the left initial mill is with a 1.4 burr. Based on the history of the compact unit with the small left burr, the MCXL with the small left burr, if we had a smaller left burr than 1.4 on the left burr for the initial mill, even with extra fine, we would get a smoother intaglial surface because that goes clear back to the compact units, which is what I started with when I started CEREC. So here's a case that was really interesting for me because I'm milling out a two-piece implant situation and I used fine mill with the 1.4 burr. You can see that margin is open. It just didn't quite close it and that was really frustrating for me. So I went back and milled out the Emacs restoration with the extra fine. No other adjustments were made and you can see that the margin was very close and clean. I'm really picky about my margins. I don't want to see that cement space there at the margin, and that's what I want to see on my x-ray. So 
We have the capability to machine and mill any way we want to, but we have to understand our milling units and we have to understand the philosophy of having to machine. I just had a conversation with a doctor online about what should he do for adding to his portfolio. And he has a large office with multiple doctors and I definitely recommended the prime mill because he didn't have that yet. He had two MCXLs. And in a busy office, if you're wanting to turn around your restoration in one appointment, prime mill definitely is working well both for zirconia and for Emacs. Just wanted to share this with you because I field a lot of questions about machining, particularly with my YouTube channel. I'm feeling questions often about machining and grinding philosophies. And we do have more than one. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you post them below. And in the meantime, you have a great day. I'm gonna have a great day here. I'm doing quite a few same day restorations today. Bye now.